everyone and welcome back to Game Cottage and welcome back for part two of blocking on basic lock cycle. So in the first video, we blocked out the key poses of a basic lock. And in this video, we're going to go through, add a little bit of overlap and drag, um, play with the weight, make sure the lock looks a little bit more natural. And we're going to go into the graph editor and clean up our poses and get rid of any extra keys, smooth out any bumps, so then you have a nice, clean, wonderful looking walk cycle. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I like to do is go to the cog. And I want to have some lateral motion in his walk, so some back and forth in the walk. And I really want the change of weight as he's walking to come on the passing pose. So I'm going to go to that passing pose and I'm just going to move his weight over the supporting leg. So the leg that is down on the floor plane or the foot that's down on the floor plane. And I'm going to mirror that on the other passing pose. Just like that. And you'll notice it does look a little bit clunky if you uh, scrub through the timeline, but that's just because we have all these key, all of these poses keyed, so there's some extra uh, keys in there that we're not going to need. Um, but we will clean those up later when we get into the graph editor. So once you have that in, I like to go to the hips, and we're going to start on frame one. I do like to add in. So movement to the hips, the hips coming back and forth with the legs as they move forward and back. So for this front foot, I'm going to move the hip, that hip forward towards the foot. Middle mouse click and drag that first frame to the last frame and hit S to key. And we're just going to mirror that on the the middle pose or the midway where his feet are switching. So now we have some back and forth on those hips. We also want to emphasize that change in weight for the weight shift and I like to put that on the high pose. So with the hips still selected, I'm just going to drop the hip for the foot that is in the air, just so we can see that this leg here is bearing the weight of the body. I'm going to do the same on the opposite leg, or the opposite high pose. Excellent. Now that that's done, we want to add some contrast to the, what the hips are doing with the shoulders. So. We did have that back and forth motion of the hips. And we're just going to put in the opposite of what we did into the shoulders. Copy that over. And then do the same on the other side. So now we have some up and down motion, or the forward and back motion with his shoulders. And then we're going to add in some contrast to the hips with the shoulders moving up and down. So I'm just going to find that and mirror it on the on the shoulders. And when we do that, we create some squash and stretch. So you notice here that the shoulder and the hip are closer together. We created some squash on this side and the hip and the shoulder are further apart on this side. That's, we created some stretch there. And that's what we want. So, like I said, it's a little clunky, but we'll clean that up. 
Another thing I want to do is add in a little bit of drag to the elbows. So as the elbows or the arm comes forward, I want that elbow to straighten out. And a little bit more. So, like that. So as it's coming forward, I want the elbow to straighten out. And then as it's coming back, I want it to bend a little bit more. Just like that. And we're going to do the opposite of that on this arm. So this arm's gonna be coming back. So we want to have the bend, have it bending more, and then straightening out as it comes forward. One thing I like to do, this is personal preference, and it depends on what the character is that you're animating and how they would walk, but I like to turn the feet out a little bit. I think it makes it look a little bit more natural. Um, I know me personally, my toes point out to this a little bit when I'm walking, not too much. But it helps the character not look as stiff. And they are going to come forward and straighten out as we scrub through, but again, that's just all the extra keys. The last thing I'm going to look at is the head. And I want to add in some overlap to the head. And this one can be a little bit tricky, but we will play with it um, in the grab editor and make some adjustments. And I will go over with you how to do that. But for right now, basically what I want to happen is I want his head to, or his chin rather, to move up as his body is coming down. And then for his chin to rotate down as his body is coming up. And we're just gonna block that in because we are gonna switch that up a little bit in the graph editor. See, it looks a little bit wonky, but that's okay. We'll fix it. So we're gonna go ahead and go into the graph editor. I keep my graph editor nested down here by my time editor and uh, just above the time slider so I can access it easily. But if you do not have it nested down there, you can just go to Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor, and it will open that up for you. So I'm going to go ahead and open mine up. The first thing I want to do is I want to select everything, all the controllers because we're going to want to create a loop for all of the movements that we're doing. So they'll just continue. So with all those selected, we're gonna to go to View, Infinity. So we'll have a checkbox there. And go to Curves, Close to Infinity Cycle, excuse me, Pre-Infinity Cycle and Post-Infinity Cycle. And you will see what that looks like when we click on an individual controller. So let's go ahead and look at that. We're going to start with the cog like we did before. And we're just going to go through each of these. So you'll see there's the keys on every single one of the key poses and we don't need all of those. So we're going to delete what we don't need and you'll notice that you'll see the uh, the curve continuing, but it does have this little this little hook up here, this little weird bend, and we don't want that. So go ahead and just select and hold shift and select both of these, and you're going to want to click the handle. It doesn't matter on either one; it works fine. And you're going to drag that handle until you've created as smooth a curve as you possibly can. And we want to do that on all of these controllers. So I'm going to go through and 
select all of them and make sure there's no weird bumps or anything like that. Moving on to the hips, we don't have any translations on those, so they're all in rotations. And we're going to get rid of all of these. And you will notice here, we don't have any weird bumps here, so we don't have to worry about straightening out that curve. Sometimes you'll find that the curve doesn't really smooth out like you would want it to or doesn't look perfect, and that's fine. You can move these at the same time if you hold down shift and middle mouse click and drag up or down, depending on what you need to do, just to make that a little bit smoother. And then you can also adjust the other curves, so, or the other controllers, other keys, so you'll have this nice smooth, this nice smooth curve. Moving on to the shoulders, no translations, and just repeat that same process. the arms. We're gonna clean up that curve there. Down to the elbow. Smooth that out. to the feet and I'm cleaning up all of the extra keys with the feet moving back and forth. The rotations of when it's bending. There's the rotation of the toe out so we don't need any of those in the middle, this just needs to be nice and continuous. And then we have all these extra little things down here. I'm just gonna go through and check all of those. Make sure they're smooth. Cool, move on to the next foot. So what we need to do is finally tackle the weird head bobbing. We'll make it look pretty good. So go ahead up to the head and find that rotate. Rotate X is what we're going to need. And go ahead and get rid of these there and smooth out the curve as, as best as you can. You can move it up and down as needed. I'm also going to go ahead and make sure that the low the 
eye matchup. Go ahead and see what that looks like without the weird things. But that's definitely too extreme. So uh, we don't need his head flopping about like that. Unless that's what your character is going to be doing, then by all means, flop away. And then you can readjust those curves as you work. Play, see what it looks like. That's much better. So it's not adding as much drag as I would like. I'm just gonna go ahead and move these back as one key. You can do that by selecting both of them, shifting and selecting both, and then by holding the shift key, middle mouse, and drag up and down. That's not what we want. We want to drag the left and you'll notice that it snaps to the next key. And then I also, I'm going to play with the timing a little bit. I'm going to select all of those keys, middle mouse click, and drag, I'm going to drag it back to two frames. Let's see what that looks like. So much better. So much better. It's not flopping around everywhere. Cool. And you can change this as needed if that does not suit what you're looking for. You can drag it more. Oh, that's pretty good. So I'm going to leave it at that. But you will notice that since we moved all of these keys, that there's no longer a key on one and there's no longer a key on 25. And that's a really easy fix. So we're just going to go over to frame one and hit S to put a key down. We're going to select that middle mouse, click and drag to 25, hit S to key it. Go ahead and get rid of that key there, we're not going to need it. And then you can select this key out here that you're no longer using and just delete it. And then clean up that curve as needed. So it should be nice and smooth. And when you play it, we'll have a nice little walk cycle. Let's go ahead and hide those curves. So there you have it. There is a basic walk cycle. Now you can add on this. You can exaggerate more. You could add more drag, more overlap. You could make them a little bit more floppy. Maybe he shifts his weight a lot more. Um, it's, it's really all all up to you and the needs for your character, but this walk right here is the basic walk, the foundation of every walk that you will ever do. So once you have that down pat, you can build on it and have fun with your walk cycles. I hope you found this video series uh, informative and happy animating. Bye!